Okay guys, so last time we started talking about the mitochondria and the chloroplasts and a million other things were going on, so I figured we would call it a day before I drew the pictures. So today I'm going to draw you the pictures of the mitochondria, of the chloroplasts. We're going to go over the structures, go over the peroxisomes, and then we're going to get into the cytoskeleton of the cell. So the lights went out. <laughs> Yay, I'm back. Okay, so uh, let me go over the different parts for you first, and then we'll go over what each of them does. So here's the picture the book gives you guys. It's, it's all right. Um, I'm going to do my picture because I, I like mine better. It's uh, just two-dimensional instead of trying to do a three-dimensional one here. So we're going to start with the mitochondria. And as you learned a long time ago, it is the powerhouse of the cell. Yeah. You have no idea what that means yet, but we will learn what we mean by the powerhouse of the cell. These lines do not connect. Connection point. There we go. Okay. So we said that there is this thing called the endosymbiotic theory that says our mitochondria and our chloroplasts were once prokaryotic cells. So we're pretty much making a prokaryotic cell out of this. So this is going to be our outer membrane. Now, if we were talking about a prokaryotic cell, this would be uh, our cell wall, our outside membrane. Then we're going to have another membrane on the inside. And it's going to look a little different than what we know the cell membrane to look like. Yeah, good enough. Okay. So, this one here is going to be called our inner membrane. Very fancy wordage here, yes. Wordage. I don't even know if that's a real word. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay. Um, inside of our inner membrane here, this is called the matrix, also known as the mitochondrial matrix, but it's in the mitochondria, so I think you guys know what's going on there. Our space in between the outer membrane and the inner membrane, so this area right here, is called the inter- membrane space intermembrane space okay now if you notice the inner membrane has these folds and they're like finger like projections here I'll just go over that one there this is called the cristae and there's a bunch of them you guys can see What's the goal of that? Well, our goal of the folds on the inner membrane is to increase surface area. If we had just one perfectly round inner membrane, just like the outer membrane is, we would have a lot less surface area. But since we fold it up, make these cristae projections, we are able to have more surface area. So this tells us that later on, once we learn about the mitochondria in its own lovely chapter, um, we'll learn that, hey, well, since it has this increased surface area, it must have some function of this increased surface area. And it does. That function is going to allow things to pass through and, uh, you know, in and out at an increased rate. If there was less surface area, you know, we couldn't do it as, as fast. So there's all your parts, guys. That's everything in this slide that we went over. The chloroplast. <coughs> So the mitochondria is going to be in plant and animal cells. People always think, oh, it's just in animal cells. No, 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 it's, it's in both, okay? Um, the chloroplast, however, this is only going to be in photosynthetic cells. It's going to be in plant cells, algae cells, those types of things, okay? So again, guys, I'm going to go over... Um, the picture, I think it's easier to go over the picture than 
to go over all these words, but the chloroplast, it's in a group of organelles that are native to plant cells only called plastids, just one example. There are other examples of different plastids, but we don't need to go over them. So here is your picture of the chloroplast, and this is the one that the, here we go hey, again. Teacher, staff member, still needing keys, uh, you may stop at the security office and I'll find them out to you. Any staff member who did turn their keys in, please stop and we'll re them out to you. All right, um, so let me draw the picture of the chloroplast here. Because I like my picture better than the books and it's more legible. So we will make it green. Yay, okay. So here is our chloroplast. Just like our mitochondria, we're gonna have an outer membrane and we're gonna have an inner membrane. Yeah, good enough. Not the most perfect outer and inner membrane, but it'll work. So this one right here is our outer membrane. And obviously, just like the mitochondria, this is our inner membrane. Okay. Uh, in between them, just like in the mitochondria, we have our inter membrane space. Right. So, there's more to it though. We are going to have these pancake-like structures on the inside that I'm drawing. And I'll draw three, three stacks of pancakes. Uh, I'm going to come on the side here, guys, just so you can see what's going on. One pancake is called a thylakoid. All right. A stack of pancakes, or a stack of thylakoids. This is called a granum. You might also see it, uh, grana, G-R-A-N-A. Okay. Um, what's in the thylakoids? Well, we're gonna have this, this pigment in our thylakoids. And that pigment is called chlorophyll. It's going to help us to absorb the sunlight. And then the only thing left to write on here, guys, is, and I'm gonna mess this up now, so it's nice and pretty right now, but all in this space here, surrounding our thylakoids, surrounding our granum, so inside the inner membrane, we are going to have a fluid, gel-like um, part of our chloroplast, and that is called the stroma. So that's our jelly-like, liquidy substance. It was prettier than, than the books until I put the stroma in there, right? Yeah. Okay. So there is your picture of a nice-looking chloroplast. Again, I like it much better than the books version. Okay. So. We're gonna go and do peroxisomes, guys. This is the only slide on it. Um, there's not much to say about peroxisomes. All they are going to do is help to break down fatty acid chains. That's pretty much it. Um, amino acids as well. And in that breakdown, we are going to take hydrogen peroxide and it gets converted into water. Um, the nice thing about peroxisomes is they don't replicate like normal organelles in your bodies. What they do is they just get big and split. They get big and they split. So that's how they reproduce. Everything, all your other cells, guys, we have to replicate the DNA. We're gonna have to do a bunch of checks. It's a very long process. Peroxisomes, they just grow and split, grow and split, okay? That's pretty much it there. Uh, and then we also talked about the hydrogen peroxide, it gets converted into water. Well, hydrogen peroxide is H2O2. We don't want that in our bodies. Okay, that's the stuff you put on like cuts, it kills all the bad bacteria, but it also kills the 
good bacteria, so it kills cells. Um, so we don't want that. So that's why we convert into water, because water for us is harmless. Here's a little picture of a peroxisome. All right, on to the cytoskeleton. So we're gonna go over some different things that make up the cytoskeleton. There's different fibers that we're gonna talk about. Here is what they look like under a uh, fluorescent stained microscope picture. All right, so there is a lot going on in your cells. So what we're gonna go over, guys, is there's microfilaments, there's microtubules, and there's things called intermediate filaments, okay? Um, but for the most part, they're all going to made, be made up of a type of protein. And what that protein does is it helps to maintain our cells shape. We're gonna talk about these, the, the walk along the track ones, but we will, we'll do those in a little bit. Um, Here's a picture of a microtubule, guys. There's a vesicle attached to it. That vesicle is attached to the microtubule through this motor protein here, okay? And that motor protein is going to walk uh, across the microtubule. There's different ways they can walk. One, some of them walk one way, some of them walk the other way. It's like a one-way street. But um, it's gonna help move that vesicle through the cell. So we have a few different types of fibers here. Like I said, we have microtubules, we have microfilaments, and then we have intermediate. So microtubules are made out of a protein called tubulin. So just think, tubules, tubulin. Uh, these are gonna be very thick ones. The thinner ones are gonna be microfilaments. They have the A in there, so think of the A as they're made up of this protein called actin, okay? That's how I remember that, those two. Um, here's the difference between them, guys. You can see the difference in size. We're not gonna go over this full chart. There's no reason for it. Way too much information to what we need. Here's our functions of our microtubules. Again, don't forget these are the biggest ones. They are going to be the main ones that are, going to, that are going to support our cell, give it its shape. Since they're so big, they're pretty strong. They're able to maintain uh, that cell structure. And then the other one here down at the bottom, guys, I should probably go over that one too. Um, they're going to take our chromosomes and rip them apart in the middle. Again, they're very strong. So they're able to take our chromosomes and actually rip them apart during cell division, and they pull them to opposite ends of the cell. If I want to draw a quick picture of it, if our cell is starting to divide into two cells, We're gonna have our chromosomes in the middle. Here is our microtubules attached to them. And what's gonna happen is they are going to rip apart so that we get this guy here. Lovely light shut off again. I'm in the dark. It's scary in here. <laughs> okay, um, you guys can see the black ones are the microtubules. They took the chromosomes and they spliced them apart. All right. Now we're saving energy. I guess if there's no one in the room, we forget to shut off the lights. That's what happens, right? Okay. Um, so in animal cells, we have this thing called a centrosome. It is not in plant cells, only in animal cells. And the centrosome is made up of a pair of centrioles. And what the centrioles do, guys, is they are going to arrange our microtubules. So in arranging them, they're going to provide the microtubules for the cell to maintain its shape and also provide the microtubules to, um, as we said, get to the chromosomes and pull them apart. Here's what the centrosome looks like. Again, there's two microtubules here, okay? The, I'm sorry, there's two uh, centrioles here. If you look at the centrioles, they are, I guess we can say like gathered into 
sets of one, two, three microtubules. So the centrioles are made up of a bunch of sets of three microtubules, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sets of these. So in total, nine times three, we have 27 microtubules making up. But if you guys ever see it in the book, it'll say it's in a nine plus three uh, structure, okay? Because there's nine of them, each one has three. All right, I'm gonna show you a short video on this in a minute. Um, but cilia and, micro, and uh, cilia and flagella, what these are going to do is these are two different structures that allow some of our smaller cells, not in our bodies, but maybe like uh, bacterial cells, paramecium's thing like things like that. They allow them to move. All right. um, let me show you the video on this now. What we're going to do, guys, is I'm going to show you how we're able to move the structures like the cilia, which are really tiny hairs, and the uh, flagella, which is much bigger. How we're able to move them. A little bit longer of a video, guys. Our brain is made of billions of nerve cells, and they're all connected. If we take a closer look, a nerve cell seems to have antennas. Most of them are receivers of information, but only one is a transmitter, called the axon. This axon is connected to several receivers of other cells, forming a gigantic neural network, the brain. Meet John. John is a kinesin, a motor protein. He lives inside a nerve cell, and he has a proper job. To ensure that a brain cell does his job properly, it needs the continuous flow of building materials, proteins. They travel through the cell using the cytoskeleton. If you would compare a nerve cell with a city, the cytoskeleton inside the cell would be the roads, and the traveling proteins would be the traffic. These materials are towed by motors along the roads. And just as in real life, there are different kinds of motors and different kinds of roads. John's sole purpose in life is to deliver his cargo to a specific place in the axon. He takes the main roads, and he walks in just one direction only. John's job may seem easy, but it's not. He has to overcome a number of obstacles to ensure that the right amount of cargo arrives at the right place. To make the journey even more difficult, John is not alone. Other motor proteins ride along with his cargo. They haven't woken up yet, but that will happen soon. The journey starts in the center of the city, just like in the center of the cell. To enter the axon, John has to pass a place called the axon initial segment. In this segment, there are two kinds of roads. The main roads that John uses called the microtubules and a lot of little alleys called actin. And here, our brave motor protein meets his first challenge because one of his sleeping travel companions, myosin, has woken up and starts to cling to the actin. And there are a lot of alleys. Only brute force can save John now. Fate strikes again. The other companion, Dainin, wakes up, and he can only walk in the opposite direction of John, resulting in a tug of war. can be only one. Along the axon in which John travels, there are places called synapses. Here, the axon connects to receivers of the other cells, regulating proteins called the shots here. 
this traffic police make sure that all passing traffic gets to the right destination. If John's cargo is needed in this synapse, he will be stopped and myosins take over his load. But today, John's cargo is safe. But what he does not know, that his road is under construction, just a few blocks away. In our nerve cells, the cytoskeleton is changing constantly. Roads are built, but are also broken down. Facing this kind of obstruction, John has to find a detour. John isn't the only motor protein on the road. There are many more. Our nerve cells need a smooth traffic flow in order to perform well. A traffic jam due to problems during the journey may ultimately result in brain disease. Understanding the challenges John faces could improve treatment or prevention. Finally, John arrives at his destination. He has fulfilled his destiny. Several other Johns are just getting started. All right. Very cool animation. So, we got this dining, or dine-in, as the guy said. I like to call it dining. Um, it's a type of motor protein. And what it does, guys, is it allows our psyllium and our flagellum to bend that way if it bends okay we got our dynein walking across the microtubule and it has the psyllium or the flagellum attached to it when they bend that allows the movement of the organism all right so once that happens we're going to have our other uh, motor protein probably walking the other way so they're not going to probably work at the same time guys they said there's a tug of war there there might be for a second or two, but once one's like, okay, let's let's more work together than, you know, work against one another. So one will go, and then the other one will go, and that's why the flagellum will be like a whip-like structure um, at the end of our bacterial cell. Okay, so here is uh, another microtubule. You guys can see down here, again, we got our 9, to, nine plus 3 um, structure there so that could be like a centriole up here we have a little bit of a different microtubule this one is in a 9 plus 2 structure and then we get a 2 in the middle as well just different structures for different uh, microtubules and how they're put together so we already talked about the walking you guys saw in that in the video how the psyllium and the flagellum uh, can bind to a motor protein and then the motor protein can walk it along the roads of the cell, the microtubules, maybe the microfilaments, okay? The microfilaments, the video talked about this as well. Um, they're going to be like the side roads. They're much smaller. And we already talked about they're made of these proteins called actin. The microvilli, uh, they're made up of microfilaments. They're in your intestinal cells. What they do for your intestines is the microvilli are kind of like the same thing that the cristae was for the uh, mitochondria. What they do is they increase the surface area. So in your small intestine, if we have more surface area, that leaves more room for absorbing things and absorbing them more efficiently into your bodies because the, your intestines are going to take in a lot of the nutrients and stuff like that from your food as we break it down. And here's a picture of a uh, microfilament. So the video also talked about the motor protein myosin, which is associated with microfilaments. Those are the side roads, just different roads that whatever can take, whatever's being uh, transported along the highway of the cell, I guess we can call it. All right, last one is intermediate filaments. They are medium. Okay, they're not gigantic. They're kind of in between our microfilaments and our microtubules. And that's pretty much it for that section, guys. So fairly short section. All right, last one. We're going to go over um, 
different materials and how they're excreted through the plasma membrane. So you guys know now we can move things through our plasma membrane, through our cell membrane. Things can go in and out. But we really never went over in regular biology what is out there, okay? What gets these substances once they leave the cell? We talked about the protein earlier in this chapter leaving the cell. Okay, where does it go? What well, goes from their cell? Yeah, how's it get there, okay? Uh, we don't know this yet, so. Anyway, it starts off talking about the cell wall, guys. The cell wall, plant cells, bacterial cells. In plant cells, the cell wall is made up of a uh, sugar called cellulose. And we talked about that before, how it is insoluble for, or um, undigestible for us, okay? We can't digest cellulose. So in the cell wall, guys, we're gonna have three layers. We're gonna have a primary cell wall, a secondary cell wall, and in between that, we are going to have a uh, middle lamella. That's a fun word to say, right? All right? So there's your three layers. If we go from the outside and work our way inward, the primary is on the outside. The middle uh, lamella is kind of in between like our, our cells, in between adjacent cells. And then our secondary cell wall, that's gonna be on the inside. And then after that, if you want to go crazy with it, inside the secondary cell wall, that's going to be our cell membrane or our plasma membrane in there. Okay. So we're going to go over this other thing called plasma desmata as well. That's this word up here. We'll go over that one in a minute. Here's a good picture, guys, of the plant cell. You can see how big the um, vacuoles are there. Okay. So animal cells, we do not have a cell wall, but we do have coverings to us, all right? It's not just the cell, membra cell membrane. We do have different things outside of our cells. Um, here's three things. We have glycoproteins. There's like collagen, proteoglycans, fibronectin. Okay, do you have to know all those? No, just know we have more outside of our cell than just the cell membrane. Here is all of the stuff outside of our cell, all right? So a bunch of things that we didn't really know that was there um, before we taken this class, right? So, oh my goodness, these lights, we're almost done, guys. Sorry, it's hard to read in the dark. <laughs> um, okay, so we're gonna go over junctions now. There's plasmodesmata, there's tight junctions, desmosomes, and gap junctions. The first thing is plasmodesmata. These are only going to be in plant cells. These are gonna be connections between one plant cell and another plant cell. This is what's gonna allow things to get from one plant cell to another. So it's like a little passageway, like a tunnel in between one and another, all right? So that's plasmodesmata. Again, guys, it's only in plant cells. Animal cells, we are gonna have three different ones. Uh, we're gonna have tight junctions. What this is gonna do is this is going to seal our cells together. It's a watertight seal. It's going to allow one cell to be right butting up against another cell. This is good because then we, then we can make tissues, tight junctions. Um, you know, we can start to put our cells together and make tissues with it. The second one, uh, desmosomes, they're almost the same thing as tight junctions. They are going to also seal the cells together. But what these ones are going to do is they're going to be using intermediate fibers, those filaments in order to just increase the strength of our tight junctions. Um, this is why like muscles, if we're using our muscles, they're not going to completely rip apart. The desmosomes help out to increase the strength between adjacent cells. Last one is pretty much the same as the plasma desmata for plants. The gap junctions are going to allow us to transport ions, materials from one cell to another cell. This is how our proteins are gonna get from one cell to another cell. So that's all of our gap junctions. Here's a picture of all of the three guys, the tight junctions, the desmosomes. You can see the desmosomes, they have like those intermediate filaments coming out of it. And then the gap junctions, obviously they're going to have a small hole in the middle. Okay. Um, last slide, guys. 
Um, this is pretty much just like a sum of everything. Cellular functions arise from cellular order, okay? We've got to make sure that we have everything working and working together in our cells. We're going to, it says there, coordinate components such as our cytoskeleton, our lysosomes, our plasma membrane. In other words, guys, everything's going to work together to keep your cell functioning, keep it functioning properly, and also to help communicate with other cells. All right, guys, that is the end of the chapter. Have a good rest of your day.